Are you hungry? It looks like you are hungry. Hallelujah. Once again, I want you to put your hands together and help me celebrate the angel of the house. And uh, the first lady of this assembly. Come on, celebrate her for me. Come on. And celebrate yourself as well. Come on. You won't do that for yourself? Come on, help me. I need your help. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Tonight, we want to ask ourselves, what is the kingdom of God? Heavenly Father, as we break this bread, we ask that you bless it. And let it nourish our soul. Let it bring all the vitamins that is needed. That our spirit being, our spirit man needs. To grow. And do great things for your kingdom. Take territories. Expand your kingdom on earth. Take dominion over our surrounding, that your name be glorified. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. What is the kingdom of God? The kingdom is the only message. That Jesus preached. Matthew chapter 4, verse 17. Jesus started to preach, and then he said in verse 17 of Matthew chapter 4 Change your mind. Because the kingdom is already here. The kingdom of God. And Jesus went ahead in Matthew chapter 10. Verse 7. And he gave the disciples what to preach. Does it mean Jesus did not trust the judgment of the disciple to be able to know what to preach? Maybe, maybe not. But he gave the disciples what to preach. In other words, he gave us what we should preach. And in verse 7 he said, As ye go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. When Jesus was on earth, he preached the kingdom. And it might surprise you that after he resurrected from the dead, guess what he preached? The kingdom. Act chapter 1. Verse 3. As soon as Jesus Christ resurrected, he was going to remind the disciples to preach the kingdom of God. Acts chapter 1, I believe in verse 3. To whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to where? The kingdom of God. Jesus, I told you in the morning, never preach deliverance. He simply delivered the people. Jesus never preached healing. He preached the kingdom and healing take place. Because this is the explanation. Whenever a kingdom takes over a territory, 
the kingdom influences that territory. Whenever a kingdom take over your life, the kingdom agenda is to change everything about you, to reflect the kingdom. So, when the kingdom comes to earth, the agenda and the intent of God is to colonize the earth. You use the word colonization. So the Bible is about a king that have an intention to colonize another territory called the earth. And his children being king over the territory. You get that? Usually, if my father is a king, I can never be king until he die. But in the case of God, he wants to be a ruler, a king in heaven. And he wants his kids to be king at the same time on earth in the other territory that the kingdom has conquered. Or the kingdom intend to conquer. So he gives the territory to his children. The characteristics of a kingdom is that the kingdom is able to expound. That's what makes the king the king. He is able to expound his territorial authority by going to the other territory and conquer the territory. Our God don't need to fight, don't need to struggle with man. He simply create the territory called the earth simply because of who? His kids. This earth was created by God for you. You didn't get that. I can tell in your face. I'll repeat. This earth was created by God for you. Because God had the intention that his children should be king. So the Bible is about a king and his kids. It's about the royal family. King that have children are called royal family. So God have children. We are his children. And he wants us to rule just like he is ruling. So he creates a place for us to carry out our sovereign rulership. And that is the earth. I'll prove to you tonight that you are responsible for whatever happened on earth. Because it was given to you. Genesis chapter 1. Verse 26. The in intention of the father, of the king, is to create the earth that his kids can run around, exercise dominion or rulership. Verse 26. And God said, let us make man in our image. After our likeness. Image does not mean that I am physically looking like God. 
Image does not mean that we are physically looking like God. It means we think or we should think and act. Our spirit being, our spirit man should think and judge and act like God. Let's read further. After our likeness, and look at the next statement. This creation or this creature, what was the intent? What is the purpose? Why is God, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, why was this executive meeting called? Because this is the top executive meeting first held by the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. And the agenda was manufacturing a product that will take complete, total sovereignty over our territory. Look at the next statement. Let them have what? Dominion. Over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeped upon the earth. I'm coming back to the word dominion because the word dominion it comes from king dom king's domain king that have dominion or rulership over territories. He said, let's form this man that the agenda will be for him to exercise sovereignty over our territory. And this sovereignty is complete is total. That means we are responsible for what happens on earth. We cannot blame God for what happened to the family. We cannot blame God for what happened to our rulers. We cannot blame God for what happened in the school system. We cannot blame God for what happened to us. We are responsible. So the question is, what is the Bible about? The Bible is about a king, write it down. A king, that may sound simple to you, but this is very important. It's very important because we're familiar with democracy. So the Bible is about a king and his kids. A king is not a president and can never be a president. A king is not a prime minister. A king don't act like president. A king cannot act like a prime minister. The word of the prime minister does not become law. But the word of a king becomes law. Everything that the king speak is law. So we are under 
a king. Let me prove it to you. Nehemiah was serving in the palace like an ordinary person. And one day he came into the palace that he came to work. And he wasn't feeling good because of what happened in Jerusalem. And then the king said, Nehemiah, what's the matter? You're not looking at yourself today. And he explained the situation to the king. And the king said, well, what would you like to do? He said, I would love to go back there and see what I can do. And the king said, okay, well then. I'm going to give instruction to the governor of the other side to give you everything that you ever needed. To do whatever you want to do. But be sure you be, you'll be back after you are done. And Nehemiah said, yes, sir. That is king speaking. He never consults anybody. He never reasoned with anybody. There was no voting on that decision. He simply had a conversation with one of his workers. And immediately, his word became law. I will give you a letter to the governor to take care of whatever you need. And after you are done, make sure you are back. And that's it. That is what is called king's favor. The king and yourself can be in a good terms that the king gave you a personal law that works for you alone. Did I lose you? I don't think so. You are looking comfortable, so I didn't lose you. You are so in tune with the king. And the king said, you know what, Daniel? I give you this word of mine. That word is not for Jacob. It's for you. And it becomes a personal law. And everybody cannot apply that law because it's not meant for them. It's meant for him because of the relationship that he is having with the king. So the king don't consult nobody to bless you. That's why all the witches in Mount Pleasant are not big enough to stop living truth fellowship. Oh, you're not hearing me. No power. No occultism. No darkness. In Mount Pleasant. No devil in Mount Pleasant. I repeat. No devil in Mount Pleasant. That is devil enough. To stop you. Oh, you're not hearing me. Why? Because you have a relationship. With the king. It is a blessing to be under a king. Because the king can easily cut off the red tape without looking back. All the protocol can be override in a minute. Because the king is speaking. I understand kingship. I understand kingdom because I was born into one. My uncle is a king. So living in his kingdom, in a kingdom, the king owns everything. The king owns the land. The king owns the mineral right. The king owns, name it, is his property. Everything in the kingdom. The people. The materials all belongs to the king. And he can give it to anyone. 
And he don't have to pray. He don't have to seek anybody's opinion or advice. So I congratulate you tonight that you are king's kids. And he wouldn't think twice to favor you, to bless you. He wouldn't even discuss it with nobody. Before the king speak or favored you or bless you, some people might say, oh, he can never be blessed. It's because the king has not spoken concerning you. Whenever the king rises up to speak a word about you, all of the enemies put together can never stop it. That's why you didn't die last night. That's why you woke up this morning. Because the king said, get up. And no power could keep you down. Are you still with me? <laughs> Are you getting this thing? Once you understand this kingdom, oh, you will be so free in my pleasant. So the Bible is about a king and his children. The Bible is about a royal family. Kings that have children are called royal family. You are sitting next to one of them. You are sitting to one of the members of the royal family. And there's one also behind you. And there's one by your side. You are a royal family. Number three, the Bible is about a kingdom. A kingdom is not a religion. A kingdom is a country. A kingdom is a nation. So the Bible is about a country. It's about a nation. You are not from the earth. You are from heaven. Sent to dominate the earth. On behalf of who? The king. You are here as a ruler on behalf of your daddy. The Bible says, whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whoever gets such authority, whoever gets such power, if not king, whatever you bind on earth, will be bound in heaven. Your daddy said, whatever you don't like here, I take care of it. Whatever you lose on earth, I will lose in heaven. In other words, you have sovereign right in this territory. That whatever you allow in man pleasant shall be allowed in heaven. Whatever you disallowed in this city will be disallowed in heaven. That's what the king said. To let you know that you are not just an ordinary human being running around this city like a slave. You are a member of a royal family. And the early you know that, the better. So when you wake up tomorrow morning, you look at yourself in your full-length mirror in your room. I'm a king's son. It's not a, that's not a statement of faith. It's a statement of reality. And I want you to put it in your heart. Because the moment it's registered in your subconscious, you become uncontrollable. You become indestructible. Once you get it, you know, in the morning, we read that 
the thing that the enemy wants to do most is to make sure you don't understand the kingdom. Because he knew that the moment you understand the kingdom, he becomes powerless. He can no longer have any control over you. Whatsoever. So the earth was to be colonized by heaven. And that project was to be carried out by you. That's what you are sent to do by your daddy who is willing to extend his domination beyond heaven. He is willing to extend his kingdom beyond heaven. Come with me to Matthew chapter 6. The Bible is about a government. A government. This is very important because the Bible is not a religious book. As some people might look at it to be. The Bible is the book of the law of a country. What you are expected to know if you are going to live in that country. Look at Matthew chapter 6, verse 9. After this manner pray ye, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, pure, holy, righteous is your name. Look at verse 10. Thy kingdom do what? Come. Thy will be done. Where? As it is where? How will his will be done? On earth. His will will be done on earth. Because his kids are over this territory that he has personally handed over to them. What is, his, what is the father's major concern? His major concern is that his will, his purpose, his original intent be done on this planet as it is in heaven. So the earth is an extension of the colonization of heaven through you. The earth is an extension of the colonization project or agenda of God through you. Maybe I put it that way, make it understandable. God wants his presence, his intent to be done here as it is in heaven. So what does that look like? It looks like God wants to extend the heaven's program on earth. He wants to extend his desire in heaven on earth. He wants to extend his will, his purpose. On earth, he wants to extend the heavenly culture to the earth. He wants to extend the value of heaven to the earth. And he wants to do all of that through you. So Jesus said, pray in this way. Our Father, where is his location? Heaven. Thy kingdom come. The entire kingdom come. 
Because that kingdom you hear, it's not a religious word. It's not just a terminology. It's the actual government. Because every kingdom has government. Including the kingdom of God. If you study kingdom, you will understand the Bible clearly. So the kingdom come, they will, they will, they purpose, they intent, your agenda be done. Right here on earth as it is in heaven. So the Bible is about a government of a kingdom ruled by a king. The Bible is about colonization project. Only kingdom colonize. Colonization is simply the ascension of king's influence over a foreign territory. Write that down. Write it down so you will remember. Colonization is simply the ascension of king's uh, influence over a foreign territory. God wants to extend his influence here on earth. And then he has chosen you to carry that out. Colonization is the expansion of a kingdom to a distant territory. Now, let me use Nigeria as a case study. Now, several years ago, the British colonized Nigeria. And then this was the whole uh, uh, colonization project. The British don't want to take Nigeria to Britain. But they want to extend the culture of the royal family to Nigeria because it was their colony. They want to extend the culture, the dressing, the eating, the food, the lifestyle, everything about the king to that place, to that country. Why? It is the uh, territory that they have conquered. So they want everything to look like exactly like the kingdom. And that's why we wear suit because that's the king's dress code. That's why we eat with silverware. That's the king's lifestyle. And you can go on and on and on. That's why I speak English because that's the king's language. They brought in the education. Everything about the king. Because the agenda is to transform this colony to look exactly like the kingdom. So that's exactly what heaven is doing with us. Heaven wants to change this earth to look like exactly like heaven. So Jesus said, pray. Thy kingdom come. So when you hear the kingdom come, it's talking about thy lifestyle come. Thy value come. Thy nature come. Thy purpose come. Thy thinking come. Everything about the king should come to the earth. So if we understand this clearly tonight, it means you and I should be speaking the king's language. And that is the Holy Ghost baptism. That is the lang original language of your country. That's the language of the king that is given to us. We are supposed to talk, speak, fellowship like the king. Relate like the king. Because that is the purpose why we are here. 
That's why he created you. He did not create you to wake up every morning, going to the job you never like. That was not his intent. His intent is that the kingdom will be first in everything. His purpose is the reason why he created us is not just for us to live here and fight for things every day, Monday to Friday. Fight through traffic. I don't know if you have traffic in your city. But if you live in Houston, you understand what I'm talking about. <laughs> Fight through traffic and complain. Going to a place you never like every day. But you go there because of what you are going to get. And do that for 50, 60 years. And then die. Is that the reason why you should be on earth? It's much more than that. Jesus said your life what more than this materials. Your life what more than these things. <laughs> Are you still here? Well, if you need me to stop, let me know. I was speaking in uh, Italy, uh, in Torino, in Italy, on Sunday night like this. And I started speaking by 7 o'clock. And I just told the people after speaking for a while, I don't know exactly how long. And I said, well, if you want to go home and you need me to stop, let me know. Well, I think I said, when it's 10 o'clock, they should let me know. 10 p.m. And they said, Bishop, it's 11.45. <laughs> I said, did I speak from 7 till 11.45? They said, yeah. And you didn't say nothing? They said, well, we're enjoying it. Let's go quickly. I won't do that tonight. <laughs> so the Bible is about colonization project. I want you to get that. Because once you get that, you will be different from everybody. You will have understanding why you are here. You will not be roaming around like a slave. You know who you are. Whenever you wake up in the morning, you know your assignment. You know what you are called to do. You know what you should be doing. I am. A king's son. And my agenda is to bring the influence of the king here on earth. Here to that company where you work. Here to that office where you are. Bring the influence of heaven into that place. Can I have an amen in the house? God's interest was not to get us to heaven. That was not the purpose of creation. The purpose of creation is to make you a ruler on earth. Because of course, you are not from the earth. Church, you are not from the earth. You are not earth product. You are heaven product. Living on earth. Did that? Did you get that? You are sent here on earth by heaven. To do a job. To bring the culture of the king. Here on earth. To teach your children. Heaven's culture. Heaven's tradition. The king's way of living, of fellowship, and of doing everything. That is our job. That's our assignment. 
You are heavenly being living in earth. Heavenly being living in earthly body on the planet called earth. So God's intent was to colonize earth with the kingdom of heaven influence. Let's look at the word dominion. I told you we will we, we'll talk about that quickly. Get your pen. Do this. The word dominion that Jesus used and that was written in Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. The story we read. The word dominion is from this Hebrew word radak. Radak. And what is the meaning? When you check the meaning of the word radar, it translates in English like this, kingdom. Kingdom. Let them have kingdom. The Aramic word is mamlok. Mamlok. Which also means kingdom. So the first thing God gave you is what? Kingdom. He didn't give you a car. He gave you kingdom. He did not just give you a house. He gave you kingdom. He did not give you healing. He gave you kingdom. He gave you the entire government of the earth to rule. Kingdom means Person that dominates the territory. Person that dominates the territory. So you are king's son. You are king's daughter. The word dominion also means sovereignty. Sovereignty. Kingdom sovereignty. Let the children have sovereignty over the earth. Meaning whatever happened here on earth. It's our responsibility. The word sovereignty is a very powerful word. It means you are totally responsible for whatever happened in your territory. You are completely, totally responsible. So you can never blame God for anything. He gave you a full control over your territory. The word dominion also means to reign, to reign, to rule. It means you are a king over your territory. In the book of Revelation, we are called, we are told that we are royal priesthood. That word is not a religious statement. It's for real. And you need to find out, how am I a royal priesthood? You are a king and a priest. Only God can make you a king at the same time a priest. So that's why you are a royal priesthood. To reign over the earth. Are you getting anything tonight? The word dominion in the New Testament also in Greek word. Basilia, which means the same thing. It means royalty. It means to rule. So we are sent to earth to establish the kingdom of heaven on earth. We are sent here to establish the kingdom of heaven here on earth. That's simple. So my agenda, my goal is here on earth to establish the kingdom of heaven. In my heart. In the heart of people. That come. Around me. If we don't understand. This. Agenda. Then we will become like a slave. Running around. Without knowing why we were here. So the Bible now. Is a constitution. Of your government. That you brought to earth. The Bible talks about everything the king wants you to know. So that's why you don't need to second guess. The king make it very clear, simple. 
what he wants us to know. And it's very explicit. Are you getting anything? So the Bible was given to us to execute heaven's agenda on earth. The Bible was given to us to uh, execute or to carry out heaven's government correctly, accurately here on earth. Hallelujah. So this is the will of the Father concerning us. You know, when the Britain colonized Nigeria, the king never come to Nigeria to live. He simply sent the person they call Governor General. That's the name of that man's office. Look up, church. This Governor General was the most important person in the entire territory. Why? He was sent from Buckingham Palace. This governor general does not listen to anybody from the territory. He listens to the king. This governor general carry out the king's order. He carry out the king's plan. The king's plan is to affect the territory. Is to change the territory. To be like the kingdom by affecting the educational system, by affecting the language of the people. And you can go on and on and on, change the culture, turn their culture to be like the culture of the king, change everything about them. Because if you can change the thinking of a man, you can control the man. It's so easy. If you can make me think certain way, then you can control me. Without weapon. Without force. So your thinking formed you. You are a product of what you think. If you think low, you're going to be low. So many people are poor not because of poverty of material. But they are poor in their thinking. Because when the thinking is wrong, the attitude will be wrong. That's why Jesus came to the people and he said change your thinking change the way you think because a new government has come change the way you think because there's a good news you know maybe you have not asked the question what makes the gospel a good news is a good news of a new government taking over your life. It's a good news of a new culture taking over your life. Change the old culture to the new one. And in this new culture, nothing fails. And nothing can fail. And nothing must fail. Because the king never fails. The king must not fail. The king will not fail. I thought I was going to have more amen. He never can fail. He never comes late. He's always on time. I just love this church tonight. Because whenever we're talking about the kingdom, you know, my blood, my blood starts running fast. 
I'm excited about the kingdom. I love the teaching of the kingdom. Because since I knew it, it changes my mentality. It changes my, my, my everything about me. It changes it completely. And that's what I'm believing God for. And I'm hoping for, for you this weekend. Come with me to Matthew chapter uh, 5 verse 19. Matthew chapter 5. Verse 19. Whoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Jesus said, the kingdom or any nation or any kingdom is built on laws. And if you will teach the laws of the kingdom and do it, Jesus said, you will be called great in the kingdom of God. And Jesus said, if you will not teach the law of the kingdom, he said, you will be called less. You lose your value in the kingdom because the kingdom is built upon the king's laws and we are custodians of the law of God if I hide the law from you I'm not going to be called great in the kingdom but if I teach you the law, because no nation is built on grace, let no man deceive you. There is no country that is built on grace. It's built on law. And it's maintained by law. It's kept by law. That's why you have some people they call law enforcement agents. To enforce the law. Because they don't trust us. So they enforce it. Hallelujah. <laughs> Are you getting anything? So Jesus said. For I say unto you. Verse 20. That except your being right shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees. Ye shall no, in no case enter into the kingdom. What is the righteousness of the Pharisees? The kingdom is not built on color. The kingdom is not built on the garment. That's what Jesus is saying. You know the garment? The robe? I have one. It's in my office. I never wear it. I have it there, but in my mind, I'm thinking the kingdom is not built. On this robe. It's built on righteousness. That's why you see Jesus. Was not like the people of his days. Have you ever asked? He doesn't dress like the religious people. Of his days. 
you hardly can recognize him among his disciples. But when you see the Pharisees coming, you just know. You recognize them by their dressing. You recognize them by their colors. So the kingdom of God is not in that. The kingdom of God is in the heart. In your heart. I want to sh show you example of a kingdom life that Jesus brought to us. Disciples were by the sea of Galilee fishing and they fish all night. You read the story and they did not catch anything. So in the morning Jesus stood by the bank of the sea. And he said, guys, do you catch any fish? And they said, no. We toil all night. And he said, cast your net to the right side. Normally, that is against the rule. Because in the Sea of Galilee, you don't fish in the daytime. Because the fish will see your net and they'll run away. That's why fishing is done in the night. And here are these disciples toil all night, never catch anything. So now Jesus is breaking the rule. This weekend and for, from today, Jesus is going to be breaking some rules in your life. Oh, you're not hearing me. What the normal rules say cannot be. You can turn to the kingdom rule. Jesus said, cast your net to the right side. And they said, Lord. We don't do this all night. But we're going to trust you. And they did. And you can tell the miracle that took place. Well, this is the thing. We live under two sets of laws. The natural law. The law of the country we are in. That says certain things are not possible. And the good news is, when the natural law says it cannot be done, we can quickly switch to the kingdom law. And what does the kingdom law say? It says, nothing completed for me shall be impossible. Nothing shall be impossible. So when the natural law say you cannot go forward, ladies and gentlemen, you can switch quickly and check what the kingdom law says. The kingdom says, with God, oh, I'm getting ready to, I'm getting ready to let you go home now. Because you'll be, You've been a good student this weekend. With God, all things. Somebody say all things. I, it don't matter what all things may mean. All things. All things. I can do all things through Christ that strengthened me. Oh, am I still in the church? Make some noise, somebody. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. That's the kingdom law that I'm under. See, the people that you walk with don't know that you are an ambassador of heaven. They didn't even know that you're a king. 
Because you never tell them that you're a king. You need to start speaking that you're a king. Because if you don't accept it, you cannot behave it. If you don't respect it, you cannot receive it. If you don't receive it, you cannot walk in it. Start receiving it now. So you can walk in it. Start accepting it. So you can declare it. They don't know who you are. That which your kingdom that sent you here. Nothing is impossible to your government. Oh, you're not hearing me. Daniel was praying, Pastor, for three weeks. The prince of the power of the air said, Daniel, you cannot receive answer to your prayer. Gabriel was there. See, Gabriel was just a minister of communication. Gabriel don't fight. Gabriel don't know how to fight. He's a gentle angel. He just bring you word. He bring you your mail. He was bringing the mail to Daniel. And the prince of the power of the air said, no, you cannot do that. You, can, you cannot bring answers of another kingdom here in our kingdom. And Gabriel just called Michael. Michael don't negotiate. Michael does not have time to ask what the problem is. Michael is fierce. Is the minister of defense. When he shows up, he defends you. Gabriel called for Michael. Michael, I got some problem. What is the problem? Well, we have some forces down here. Won't let me go. For what? They said, nobody in this kingdom received mail from another kingdom. And Michael said, wait right there. I'll be with you in a minute. And Michael shows up. And then he took the answers. And say, you know what? I'll be back. And took the request, the answers to Daniel. And said, Daniel, since the day you start praying, the answers has been released. But the prince of your kingdom here have a law that you don't receive blessings or answers to your request from another kingdom. Now I send for Michael. Michael is dealing with it. Now I have to rush down and give you the answer. I meet him up over there. He is taking care of business. I pray for you that from today, you will understand who you are. The moment you understand who you are, trust me, all the powers in your neighborhood, they better watch out. They better watch out in that office. They better watch out anywhere you step into. Because your kingdom, your government knows no bound. Your government does not recognize the word impossibility. All things are possible with your government. You can make things happen with your government. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. Ha, ah, wow. Is it just me? It's hard. Because that's the truth of who you are. What is the kingdom? The kingdom is the governing influence of a king. Over a territory, impacting it with his will, his purpose, his intent, producing a citizenship of people who reflect his culture, his nature, 
his value and morals. I'll say it again, write it down. And read it over and over. What is a kingdom? A kingdom is the governing influence of a king over a territory. Impacting it with his will, with his purpose, and his, his intent. Producing a citizenship of people who reflect his culture, his nature, his value, and his morals. That is what Jesus said, pray for. Your culture come, O oh God. Let your nature fill the earth. Let your purpose fill the earth. Let your will be done. Let your original intent be done. Let your culture become my culture. Let your nature become my nature. Let me have your value in me and morale. A kingdom is a country where the citizen reflect king's lifestyle. They live like the king. They talk like the king. They dine like the king. They dress like the king because they are kings themselves. You speak the language of the king as well. So all kingdom have government. And all kingdom have territories. And our territory is the earth. And God has given it for us to govern it. For us to dominate. For us to rule by the king's order. A kingdom is literally a community of people with the same culture. Kingdom is a nation under a king's rule. So when you claim to follow Jesus, when we claim to be Jesus' disciple, the moment we claim that, ladies and gentlemen, we lose our right. We lose our right to him. You know, sometimes I've been wondering why we don't receive answers to prayer as much as we want to. But this is what I learned in the secret place. I learned that when we come before the king, we don't force with the king. We don't make the king a liar. We don't make the king feel that what he said was not true. In other words, we don't, we don't submit enough to the king. Part of us is thinking the king is partial in his judgment. Oh, the king did such and such for so and so, but why me? Why are you not blessing me? I've been doing such and such for you in the church. I pay my tithe. Why are you not blessing me? Ladies and gentlemen, that's not the way to behave in the kingdom. In the kingdom, you don't take the king for granted. You come before the king and you submit. Because you are the king's subject. You don't tell the king, I hate you. Where were you when my mother died? Oh, king, what were you doing when my only child died? Ladies and gentlemen, that is being rude to the majesty. So when you come before the king, is loving king. When you submit to his orders, like I did not come to 
argue with you. I come to submit to your will. I come just as I am, like the song said, without one plea. But that the blood was shed for me. Behold, Lamb of God, I come. I didn't come to make excuse. I didn't come to say Satan made me do such and such. I, I just take responsibility for my behavior. I am sorry. My judgment was corrupted. I submit to your will. Trust me. When you come before the king and you have such behavior, like David said, don't judge me according to my sin. Judge me by the abundance of your mercy. In other words, he threw himself into the hands of the king. I am not claiming right. I'm not telling you why I did this, why I did not do this. Just don't judge me because of my bad behavior. But judge me according to your mercy. If you were judged and someone came and said, don't judge me by the multitude of my mistake. But judge me according to your mercy. What would you do? He got you. And then you're just going to look at him and say, this bad boy. What am I going to do? He got me. Because you didn't come and say, king, I did it because so and so make me mad. You are making your case worse. You are making your case longer. King, I did it. I'm responsible for it. It was my choice, my decision. But don't judge me by the multitude of my sin. Judge me because of your mercy. Let me fall upon your mercy. Look at me with the eye of your mercy. And the king will say, well, we're going to let him off the hook. Let him go. Because you have appealed to the throne on the inside. Because he has power to kill and make alive. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, I want you to go home now. <laughs> I want you to rest and relax, and meditate on these things. I know it's probably going to take the whole of this year for us to get it. You know why? It's not our fault. It's because of what we're used to. So it's going to take some time. I'm not expecting that you're going to get it right away. But meditate on it. Think about it. I'm a king. Am I a king? Yeah. I'm a king. So I have territory. I have kingdom. And the earth is given to me to rule. So when sickness tries to come around your home, you can say, what are you doing here? This is my territory. Get out. And you believe in what you said. Jesus said, it will come to pass. Because you are a king. Will you stand up, please? For over 40 years, that I've been handling this microphone, I can tell when church is under conviction. I can tell when folks receive the word. I can tell tonight that you receive the word. I can tell in the morning as well that you receive the word. And trust me, you will be blessed. You are already blessed. All you have to do is to see yourself the way the king sees you. Don't see yourself less 
than what the Constitution say about you. Can you do that? Raise your hands. Holy Spirit, you are the governor of the federal government of heaven. Thank you for living on earth to carry out the king's will in our lives. I present living truth fellowship to your hands. That the culture of the king, the value of the king, the lifestyle of the king, that these men and women will reflect all of that in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. That by the Holy Spirit, that this church will grow and know no bound from strength to strength in the name of Jesus. That this church will walk in the power of the Holy Ghost on daily basis. In the name of Jesus. That these men and women will become strong. Mighty army in the city. Conquering territories. Taking over territories for the king in the name of Jesus. Becoming a terror to the kingdom of darkness. Expounding the kingdom of God. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Receive all the glory. In Jesus' name I pray. And the church has said.